Good morning. Can you hear me okay? My French is okay. <laughs> uh, super. So um, I will um, I will speak a bit about personalization and how it can help you uh, uh, be successful as retailers. So a quick background first. Um, we are a seven years old company, Dynamic Yield. Um, we are building platforms for creating better customer experiences using machine learning and AI. And we create a platform that basically allows you to do a myriad of things, from things like A-B testing, to product recommendations, to email triggers, to mobile app push notifications, uh, to in-store personalization as well. So it's a very robust, a robust platform that is being used by about 300 customers globally. Um, that's a partial uh, list of our customers. And so anywhere from McDonald's that recently acquired Dynamic Yield, and I'll talk about it in a couple of minutes, uh, to you know, Urban Outfitters, Michael Kors, you know, LVMH, Media Markt, Saturn, uh, and a bunch of um, large European retailers. Um, Europe is a big part of our business. Even though we are headquartered in New York and engineers in, uh, in Tel Aviv in Israel, uh, our headquarters in, uh, is actually in Berlin for the European operations. And we have Romain who is, um, has opened our French offices um, about a year ago. And, uh, and uh, as I uh, committed yesterday to Geraldine from LVMH, uh, who is a great customer of ours, we are committed to the French market and we're going to start hiring in Paris um, and, and creating a local Parisian team uh, because uh, our French is not as good as the Parisians. So uh, we want to go local in France. It's a very big market and a very exciting market for us. Um, Gartner recognized us last year as uh, really the world leader in personalization engines. Um, and um, I'm only saying that to qualify a bit what I'm going to talk about in the next couple of minutes. So first, a quick video. Um, so some of you may have heard, but McDonald's paid over $300 million to acquire Dynamic Yield about uh, two months ago. Um, and it was a pretty crazy move by McDonald's, and it got a lot of uh, press worldwide. So I wanted to give you some context on why would a hamburger joint buy a personalization engine. Um, so here is a, a quick video of um, the McDonald's uh, drive through experience using personalization. And I'll, I'll let this video play for one minute. Uh, no. Here, we have recognized a customer and simplified the menu board. Hi, um, can I get a grilled artisan chicken meal, please? Uh, with the Sprite. Okay. And let me also get a filet of fish, please. Yep, just a sandwich. Okay, well, that's the order. Yep, that's it. Okay, real. Because we know his purchase history in real time, and it's a peak hour, we have removed 40% of the items off the menu. We make suggestions based on what he likes and what people like him prefer in real time. As we take a look at his favorites, we have recommended items that he might like to try based on his history, such as a simple lunch sandwich. So that's um, a, a quick uh, internal video from McDonald's, but the idea is pretty simple. You know, if Amazon can do product recommendations for the last 15 years and retailers can do product recommendations for the last 15 years, why wouldn't you have it in the offline world? As the experience is becoming more and more digital, there's more digital signage in the stores. You know, if you think about checking in in the airport, all of these digital touch points are a true opportunity for personalization uh, because you can identify the customer um, again, adhering to GDPR and all the local rules and regulations, and then offer the customer a more relevant experience. And the idea is that the more relevant the experience is for the customer, the more satisfied the customer is and the better the brand is doing. So with McDonald's, we've done a, an extremely successful pilot in the United States last year. And um, with the scale of McDonald's, um, it has escalated very fast to Steve, the CEO of McDonald's, basically asking me in for a meeting and saying, hey, do you want to be dynamic yield part of a McDonald's company? And uh, 
we said yes at one point. Um, and the nice thing is that we are staying a completely independent company, which means that we can operate and continue operating completely independently, but now with a huge investment by McDonald's to continue developing our, our stack, our technology stack, for any other customer of ours. So this is pretty exciting times for us at Dynamic Yield. So when we think about it, um, about the different channels Here, that you have we for... Have oh, that wasn't me. Um, when you think about the different channels that you have now, you know, we think about Alexa, you know, mobile phones, Apple Watch, all these digital channels will be an opportunity for personalization. But because the bandwidth is much more limited, you have to make more intelligent decisions as to what to show the customer. You know, when I enter, um, I don't know, a Louis Vuitton store, I get an, an immersive experience, right? I see all the products, I can walk around, my eyes can scan hundreds of items very quickly and I can see what I want. When I now view the Louis Vuitton catalog on my mobile phone, it's not as optimal of an experience because this entire richness of their catalog is translated to a very small screen that I have to, to scroll. So the decision of what products to show me, what creatives to show me, what promotions to show me has a huge impact on, um, on the customer experience, on conversion rates, and on revenue as well. So we think that basically um, we are about to enter a hyper-personalized world, and it's a combination of three aspects that will make this experience stellar. It is how do I take the customer data and I use it to add the context and the, real, and the content to create a great experience. You know, um, Today is a nice day in Berlin, so it will not be making sense for me to sell umbrellas outside. But yesterday, actually selling an umbrella could have been very good business for me because it was raining and it was cold here. So in this case, I use the weather context of changing what I'm selling to my customers. And when you think about us as individuals, it is when you're presenting us with the right offer, the right products at the right time that we are shopping, this is when you're going to have a very good experience. So what do customers want? We want efficiency. So when I'm buying my dog food you know, on Amazon, uh, I don't want to go through 100 clicks to buy a bag of food. I want to go to my order history, click once, buy again, and Amazon takes care of everything. And the day after, I have my dog food ready and shipped to my house. I want it to be a very efficient experience. Uber is a very efficient experience. I want the experience to be relevant, right? So if you think about your Instagram feed, if I show you my Instagram feed, you'll think it's the most boring Instagram feed in the world because it's not relevant to who you are. But your Instagram feed is interesting for you because you selected who you want to follow and you've created your own relevant circle on Instagram. And we want to have fun. I mean, we are in a world where experiences are what we remember. It's not the products we buy. You know, and if you think uh, some of you here have, you know, iPhones and some of you have Apple computers, I'm sure you all rem can remember the first time you got an iPhone as a gift and you opened this box, you know, this whole experience of opening a box. Who thought that it would be a big part of a consumer electronics play? They focused on the experience of starting to use their phone and they thought about it already from the box level. So as consumers want to have more and more experience, our role in the digital world is to figure out how can we help you build better experiences for your customer, knowing that engineering and IT are always a bottleneck. I don't know any company where they say, oh, we have so many software engineers, we can do whatever we want. Software engineers are like diamonds. Not that they are that uh, good looking, but they are very rare. Um, and I think that this is really the challenge that we all as marketers we face is how do we use the bandwidth we have from the engineering team that is usually worried about other things and as marketers we have a low priority from IT. How do we get enough buying from IT to be successful? So these are for me three examples of great companies that combine the efficiency and relevancy and joy. So Venmo, I don't know if you know Venmo, I, I don't know if it's big in France, but in the US it's, um, it's the way that people now transfer money to each other. So when I owe a friend $5, I just Venmo them. So I went, for example, from a world where I did zero wire transfers. I, I, you know, wiring money from your bank account is a pretty tedious process to the point that I'm using Venmo maybe twice a week. So I went from zero wires to 100 wires a year in no time because of the experience, it was relevant and it was fast and efficient. Stitch Fix is a $3 billion fashion business uh, that has gone about um, personalization. 
Um, and I'm running a bit out of time, so I wanted to talk about how do you make it easy and how you don't make the CX experience extremely tedious for you as a marketer. So the way I look at it is where to start. And there's really um, five steps. One is you need to identify a leader uh, that can rally around personalization and customer experience. And it has to be someone who is smart, who is data-driven. Um, the fact that you're here in the room, maybe you're the right leader in the organization, but it has to be someone with enough clout and respected in the organization because you have to make very, uh, various departments work together. You need to get the buy-in of part-time contributors to do personalization. It can be a software developer that we know from the front-end team that will give you X hours a week. It can be a graphic designer, someone in content. So you don't need full-time commitment of this team, but you need to have the different contributors to participate in the customer experience journey. Then you need to identify a couple of fast wins. Now, I'm a CEO of a 200-person company. I don't have a lot of time for stories, but if someone shows me data about a certain initiative that has generated an increase in our revenue in any of the metrics that I care about, I'm willing to fund that initiative in a big way. And it's the same thing with retail. If you show an initiative that has created a material lift in conversion rate or customer retention or average basket size, it's very easy to rally the organization and to have your CFO allocate extra budget for it because we are in a data-driven world. And then you need to start a culture of bold experiments. Too many brands are too concerned about you know, brand value in the digital world. You know, oh, is my homepage looking perfect? Is that image perfect? Is the content perfect? The reality is we need to um, not be afraid to break things and to just move faster because the movement in itself creates a lot of value and learning that can be used at scale. And companies like Facebook, you know, um, with all its challenges, you can, any product manager in Facebook can basically do an A-B test on a million users with the click of a button. They don't need to get permission from anyone to continuously run A-B tests. And, and as a company, this is how they've built an amazing platform over the last you know, 10, 15 years by just experimenting relentlessly about new ideas and not being afraid that sometimes the experience breaks. And of course, as long as you keep like the, I would say, the customers in mind and you don't um, breach their, their trust. Um, and then when you get promoted, you send me a postcard or Venmo me at Leah Dagmon. Um, so I'm running out of time. Uh, if you want a copy of the presentation, I have some examples I wanted to go through. So you can feel free to, um, uh, let me go here, feel free emailing me at liadedynamicil.com or visit Roman in our booth and we can show you some live use cases of how it makes an impact. Thank you very much.